Okay. Uh, first, I'm going to do what I can to try to authenticate those documents about the subprime mortgage situation, and then I'm going to see if they're connected to recent information that's been online saying that Rahm Emanuel refused to participate in certain uh, committee meetings regarding Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. When several years ago, when I was uh, first investigating matters up to and including matters connected to municipal bonds, the publicly accessible information about Emmanuel's biography said that as soon as Barack Obama was elected president, all of the meetings and all of the proceedings from that meeting were allowed to be classified and not made available for the public. And in early 2019, I believe, my understanding was that as part of the brokering, or actually the end of uh, 2018, summer 2018, as part of the $5 billion HUD settlement with Houston, was an effort to contact people associated with Emmanuel personally, but also with people who had been on that committee with him, to get access to information that was a part of that classified cache of documents regarding those proceedings because they were basically going to use them as a form of blackmail in order to get that $5 billion approved through and from HUD. Now, this came on unconfirmed channels, but if, in fact, it can be proven that that issue, the electronic version of American Banker, is in any way correct, and by the way, I have documents that appear to be some digital version of a hearing that allegedly happened two months after the publication, May 24th, right? Which has its own correlation with that document that was uh, produced by the Congressional Research Service that had its anniversary this year. That backs up my theory that what was going on during the 2008 election was part of a specific form of laundering of assets that had been seized during the original congressional hearings around Citigroup and um, other banks concerning private banking and money laundering and Russian money laundering. And that 10 years later, during the 2008 banking bailout situation and scenario, what they were really doing was, in addition to other things, preparing the way to launder those assets specifically for members of Congress and their friends in finance and banking they had set up nice kickbacks with. And I believe that somebody that's more sophisticated and has access to specific kinds of information can actually identify the specific processes and transactions that pegged options during 2008 for implementation after the 2008 election and up until this day that have been allowed to turn over, including during periods of swapping, which have recently been demonstrated, i.e., here's a class of illicitly laundered assets that some Democrats are going to get for a while, and then we're going to allow for those to be turned over to the Republicans to get for a while, while the actual person that is forming the foundation for whatever is supposed to be accepted as an underlying ends up getting manipulated and gaslighted and attempted for coercion into completely abstracting and derivating their livelihood so that they just relinquish any of their own political agency. And that's reinforced with a consistent process of trying to depreciate their assets to such a level that even the emotional intelligence resonating concurrent to what they're doing registers as if it's, I don't know, 11-year-old, 12-year-old, is that what you mean by brokering the 12-year-old? Because there's a different level of emotional intelligence that is exhibited by an asset connected to 11 years old versus an asset connected to 12 years old. Right? So, you know, matters of consent and capacity to consent, they actually become very important in this matter because we're talking about cognizability. It's very, very important to establish this as fact. See, I never in any way, shape, or form consented to being involved with a domestic terrorist organization that was trying to use as a cover that it was engaged in some national security level financing regime around creating futures contracts based on false information 
tampering with government documents and tampering with evidence in a criminal investigation, including a criminal investigation of terrorist activity. Just so you fucking know. <laughs>